greetings and welcome to another spellbinding episode of Poet the Poet. And uh, I'm Robert Dunn, and I got to be host because I'm the only one around here who could spell, at least uh, without the help of a machine or a textbook or something. Anyway, um, we're coming to you from Seaburn Books in Astoria, Queens, on Steinway Street, just off Broadway. The Queens version of Broadway, not the Manhattan version of Broadway, but don't worry, it's still a very entertaining street in its own right. And uh, Seaburn Books is not only a bookstore, but it's also an art gallery and a tea bar where you can get all kinds of tea and paintings. And uh, try not to strain your tea with the paintings here. This is very important to remember. And we want to thank Sam Chekwaz for letting us come in and uh, rumble, at least verbally here tonight. And uh, we have a couple of interesting rumblers here. Uh, we have uh, Brenda Morris on the one side, and we have Tom Conlon. On the other, with his guitar, with the uh, with the bite taken out of it. There. Yes, uh, the cutaway. Oh, the cutaway. I used to have a suit by that name, but uh, I used to do the strutaway in my cutaway the way Jimmy Durante used to. So, uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> I don't want to get lost in my own musings here because we have a lot of good poetry and song to to get through. So why don't we get to Brenda Morris here, a okay. native of the Bronx. Yep. Yay, Bronx. Uh, all together now. And. Uh, and you've been writing uh, poetry, it says here, for six hours? <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I, okay. I'd, I'd say longer A little than longer that. than that, I would hope. Also a painter. Uh, let's see. You've been in a number of anthologies. Mm -hmm. uh, featured all over the place in mm -hmm. New York City and upstate New York. And uh, let's see, you did a number of years in upstate New York. Yes. But you're back for good behavior. And, yes. Uh, <laughs> and that's what it is. Returned in April 94. Just couldn't stay away. Could well, you? I fell in love. and. Ah. Fell in love and moved to the city. I see. Mm -hmm. Most people fall in love and go the other direction. <laughs> <laughs> and you also owned a bar, as, yeah. uh, as I understand it. Yes. Um, I named it Brenda's. Brenda's Bar in Socrates. That makes work. <laughs> that makes sense. I mean, it's alliterative. It's everything. Yeah, let's see. And, and in an unrelated project, uh, you have two children. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Did you get a lot of lawyers at your bar? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, tell you what, rather than uh, <laughs> rather than just ramble or rumble or whatever it is that I think I'm doing here, why don't we get into a poem? Okay. This oh, is my mo oh, okay. Strays. Drunk to his broken knee bone. Funny how his cries sounded like laughter. I could worry about your words. Roll them on my tongue with a mouthful of luck. Papa's sick walk, leaving kid late, and the night-splintered fingernails romp in my hairdo. Not firecrackers, except for a very soft clicking, impatient tongue, until brains tick for you. I am Mama Cat's quick paw, slapping all the creaming mouths underfoot, waiting through the front door. Crying is okay in bed every night. Those bad thoughts, wordy language in another language, wrinkled and monotone, coating my teeth. Love letters explain none of the shame nor its penalties, too often saving the last drop of coffee milk for you, cranky as a glass step. In my right mind, I'd move to Alaskan room temperature or a walk-in closet, strolling through bushes of dresses and vineyards of panties and braberries. You say that I'm too sensitive, and yet we're tender as a stone angel's kiss, locked gently on Santa Lucia's blind eyes, and walk like buttons under a racetrack sky. You scrub dishes, I wash spinach. We eat our salad on clean plates. Lying was easier when all that I lost was a new conviction. Emptier now, my posture is all that I own. I tend to wash my spinach in the dishwasher myself. Do you really? Yeah, but it, it tends to jam the motor, but the effects are well worth it. Uh, <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Mama Cat, did you say? Mama Cat. Wasn't she a rock singer? <laughs> Cass. Oh, well, I, yeah. <laughs> I was close anyway. One thing I forgot to mention in, in your bio is that you work as a phone psychic. Yes. Can you tell me why I get all those wrong numbers? Uh, no, <laughs> I can't. Well, we don't have a crystal ball for you, but can you do anything with this? Uh, it looks half full or perhaps half empty. <laughs> I see visions. Well, maybe later. How about another poem? Okay, and that sounds good. <sighs> this one's called Not Cooking Chicken Tonight. Give me a kiss and smell the Tupperware. Tell me, are the tomatoes still good? Do you have any coffee? 
I'll check between my legs. I think that I smell coffee, but maybe it's my butt. Tell me, is it still good? Smell the cat box and tell me if it smells like tomatoes. I'm a tomato. Do I smell like coffee? Exactly. A grocery clerk with a photo finish memory. Are you hungry? No. How do you make chicken? Cook it. But where do I put the oil? Why not rub it on your knees and fry them? How hot should the oven be? 12.45 or 12.30? You don't do anything all day, so why don't you cook? If I knew the answer, I'd carve off my wings. Ah. I'm not cooking chicken tonight. <laughs> I appreciate that, don't as a matter of fact. Don't ask. <laughs> uh, as, long as, as long as you don't cook the cat box, Instead, I think we're coming at it. <laughs> you'll never know what you'll get if you ask me to cook chicken. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> I eat a lot of turkey myself. Does it show? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, did I mention that Seaburn Books was also an art gallery? Oh yes, yes. I bring it up because uh, I figured we could pin your poems on the walls here and uh, and display them as verbal modern art because uh, you're very imagistic get away with a word like that. It's derived from Imogene Coca, you see, and uh, that's where that came from. But, uh, very partial to that. So. Thank you. Um, what has coming from the Bronx done in the way of uh, influencing your muse? From the Bronx? That must uh, be something. Hmm. I, I, it's been so long since <laughs> I've even, even been to the Bronx. Uh, but you you can you can take the girl out of Pelham Parkway, but you can't take Pelham Fordham Parkway. Road. Fordham Road. Same difference. Uh, <laughs> it depends, on, depends on what side of the Bronx you're on, anyway. Um, I was around the corner from the Lowy's Paradise. That must have helped. That and that was a beautiful uh, theater. And when you when I when I sat there and, uh, to to watch the movies, you could see the stars up in the sky. It, that was my favorite place. Any relation to Nita Lowy? No. Um, <laughs> never mind. How about another poem? Okay. <laughs> This one's called uh, Good Intentions. I hide behind that myself as an artist. The day can't calm down a sky's shaky smile trying to fit her sticky composure through these slats. She can barely slide all of that on-edge behavior over my lips, spitting day-old predictions into a fistful of tea leaves, never too comfortable in a neighborhood of footprints outside. On whom will I walk? A leftover stroll or panic? For a pickup of strays under my feet, I have a photographic memory in a box on the floor. In it, she's usually smiling. I remember the last time. She remembered to hose down words until I was sopping and breathing second nature shivers. Or do I forget the last forgetting and remember the last remembering in a swiveled cup where nothing was spelled out? Mm. And it wasn't the paper cup either. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. What else have you got? This one's called Pebbles. After the massage, I wore a padded bra because the love lesson broke my heart and I needed something softer than a hug. She said I was aging in low light, tense as an Apache dancer's grin. A handful of vows worn smooth and shuddering build up for a rumble as if I could absolve his damnation and my chill with a stiff nod tangled in a cordless phone. Idle questions are predators in a tin man's trance. I confide to my scent, swelled in the cat. Rub him when you worry, but don't marry a pebble. He'll roll downhill at the first sign of trouble, however glistening. My thumbprint awakens her sunlight wine on the windowsill. Shrill predictions ripple with his dry bones skipping water. Uh, don't marry a pebble, you say. Right. What about a bam bam? <laughs> You've heard of kidney stones? I'm suffering from an attack of Flintstones <laughs> right about now. But it's, it's marvelous <laughs> poetry, just the same, uh, Brenda. Oh, I want to thank, thank you for coming on. But uh, I want to take a uh, a brief sabbatical for a second because we got a little surprise for everybody uh, that is sort of related to Brenda, at least by marriage. And you'll find out about that in just a moment, so stay with us for that. You stay okay. too. <laughs> again, Poet the Poet. Uh, now, Brenda brought a relation by marriage, yes. as I understand it. The relation by marriage is uh, your husband, then. My husband, Jack ah. Tricarico. Ah, Jack Tricarico. And uh, Jack, what do you do? 
I'm also a poet and I'm a painter. I have, I have been painting a lot more than I have been writing. I started, uh, I started painting when I was two years old. <laughs> and I've been painting this ever painting since. <laughs> no, this <laughs> painting was done about ten years ago. There's <laughs> nothing like displaying one's life's work. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I said, uh, well, tell us about this painting. For, uh, I did this painting about, actually it was longer than ten years ago. It was about fifteen years ago. And it's called The Abyss. It's a watercolor and it's going to be exhibited here at the Seaburn Gallery. And um, for Percy Abyss Shelley, I suppose. But the Abyss. <laughs> You'll yeah. get me for that. <laughs> and um, right, if well, I did this painting again, I think I would do it in, entirely differently. But I like it as it is. Uh, what's, so, it, what's it made of? If I can it's a watercolor. Uh -huh. It's a watercolor. Do you specialize in watercolors? No, I like oil, but I, I, I think I do watercolors as well. Alan, also. I put oil on my salads mainly. Well, 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 Jack, thanks for dropping by, and mm. thanks for bringing the painting, and, and uh, we'll help you move it a little later. Okay, all right, thank you.